Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's annual meeting at Trade Show in Washington, D.C. Our coverage here is sponsored by AM General, Elbit Systems of America, General Motors Hydrotech, L3 Technologies, and Leonardo DRS. And we're with my friend uh, Ranan Horowitz, who is the CEO of Elbit Systems of uh, America, one of our sponsors. Uh, Ranan, uh, you haven't changed a bit in the last two weeks. You still look good. Thank you, Vago. I appreciate it. So do you. <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep up my end of the bargain. <laughs> Um, we talked at AFA where you talked a little bit about some of the things you guys were rolling out. Yep. Um, each one of these shows is an opportunity. Um, I want to talk about helmet-mounted sites because there's a lot of connection yep. with the, the technology you guys developed for the F-35 that you have applicable here. But what is this beautiful vehicle doing here, you know, and, and how does that fit into what you're showing here at the show? Very good. We're using this vehicle basically as a way to demonstrate technologies and capabilities. You talked, Vago, about the helmet-mounted display capability. We are actually bringing that technology down to the combat vehicles. And uh, the uniqueness of this, you know, is uh, as the Army is looking at survivability and lethality, they're putting active protection system, they're putting different capabilities, fighting an urban environment. It's become even more important for the crew to be able to fight and have supreme situational awareness from inside the vehicle. So what we have here is a system, Iron Vision, that provides that capability 360 degree see-through capability with cameras mounted outside the vehicle with a helmet mounted display system, similar technology to the technology we have on the airborne platforms to be able to do that. So the solution really is going to change, the solution is going to change how soldiers fight. Be able to do this from within the vehicle with supreme situational awareness, protected so lethality and survivability, and this is the vehicle we're demonstrating that capability. Um, and, and this one is, if I'm correct, an Israel Army vehicle because it has the 120 millimeter uh, mortar um, on it as well. But talk to us a little bit about the U.S. Army requirement for this. Um, you know, how is the U.S. Army looking at this? Because this is a technology that the Air Forces, um, particularly because of the Joint Strike Fighter Program, but that includes the U.S. Air Force, Marine Corps, and the Navy have been looking at as, as a future. Um, but the Army has been a little bit less, uh, particularly from a ground vehicle standpoint. Generally, helmet-mounted sites and things like that are reserved for attack helicopters or even for special mission uh, uh, helicopters. Talk to us about the challenge of getting a requirement written for the Army to accept this kind of technology in its ground vehicles? Well, actually, I think I think from a requirement perspective, we're seeing more and more and understand that you need to be able to, to achieve the protection that's required, you have to fight from within the vehicle. So from a requirements perspective, I think there's recognition and there's a lot of acceptance. I actually think, Vago, the biggest va barrier up until now was a barrier for affordability, be able to take these systems that for the uh, airborne platforms are more expensive and put them in a way that's affordable, that can be integrated into a, a ground vehicle. This is the demonstration vehicle we're using here. We uh, completed a demonstration on the Striker a few months, uh, a few months ago, and uh, we're looking forward to try and see how this fits into uh, future modernization for Striker, for Bradley, for the Abrams, and of course into the next generation uh, fighting vehicle. What are some of the other um, technologies and, and systems you guys are highlighting here? Uh, one of the key area that we're highlighting is threat uh, detection and protection of helicopters. As you know, the threat to our helicopters, U.S. Army helicopters, is evolving and it's becoming more and more severe. So one of the things we are bringing uh, to the U.S. is proven deployed capability to provide threat detection missile warning systems from longer ranges with a higher reliability, very low false alarm, very mature capability that have been deployed in Israel and on, on other armies uh, and air forces around the world, and we're bringing that here to the U.S. as well. Um, another area is in the area of precision fires, uh, loitering munitions. Uh, as you can see in our booth, we have a, a, one of our advanced loitering munition capabilities. The chief of the Army, uh, General Mealy, is talking about precision fire, longer range, uh, endurance capability, and this is one of the areas in which we're investing money and uh, investing in capabilities. And uh, let me ask you a budget challenge question. We were talking to Brad uh, Feldman of uh, Cubic. Uh, I, I said the word continuing resolution, yes. and he said there have been 31 of them, yes. not that I've been counting. Yes. Uh, you know, how does that affect um, you? You know, you're the CEO of a, of a, of a global business. Um, you know, you have a footprint here, but there is, a, you know, a big parent company uh, that is a technology generator. But 
you know, how, what does the, the continuing resolution and the budget uncertainty, you know, everybody had an expectation that yes. there was going to be more money. Yeah. There is an expectation there's going to be more money, but people don't know how much more money nor when it, that more money is going to show up. Yeah. So what kind of a challenge does that uh, present for you, especially when it comes to continually investing, right? You guys are always yeah. continually trying to invest, as everybody in this hall is, to win the next order, the, win, win the next contract. Talk to us about the challenge in, in this environment when this budget pressure still has not evaporated and you could argue is exacerbated because even if the Army does get more money, as the Chief has made clear, readiness remains his number one priority. He will so be look, investing look, to fix look, it. Look, uh, we definitely, just like anybody else in the industry, would like to see much more certainty in the budget environment and understand where it is. But in reality, I cannot, we cannot impact that. So we have to work from within what we have there and what we can do. Our focus these days is on understanding the Army's issues and priorities, making sure we invest in the right technologies and capabilities in order to meet those priorities. So it's in survivability and lethality, if it's in precision fires, if it's in advanced uh, threat detection for helicopters, if it's in network operations, in the resiliency of networks, that's where we are investing in. Because I think that when the budgets are set, these will be the priorities, and we at Elbit Systems of America will be ready, just like we've done in the last 25 years of keeping America safe. Wow, and on that note, Ronan, thanks very much, and hope you have a great day, USA. Thank you, Vago. It's a pleasure.